Well, three key things must be in place to safely reopen the economy. Enough testing to find positive cases, contact tracing to identify anyone they came in contact with, and a place for those people to isolate. Test, trace, isolate is the mantra, and governments everywhere are figuring out how best to do it. Because even when the curve is flattened, the virus is still out there. Smartphone apps are one way to contact trace. Alberta is using one, but as Heather Urex West explains, it's far from perfect. The people in this room are doing some of the most important work in the fight against COVID-19. They are contact tracers, and their job is to find people who may have been exposed. So we're breaking chains of transmission through the contact tracing and also identifying, as I said, potential sources that there might be a cluster happening that we need to identify. Without proper contact tracing, a small outbreak can quickly get out of hand. But the work is tedious and imperfect, relying on people to remember everywhere they went and everyone they saw, going back two weeks or more. If you ask them what they did three, one day ago, four days ago, five days ago, it takes a while for that recall. It's why provinces are looking at supplementing their contact tracing work with new technology. Alberta was the first to launch its own smartphone app. AB Trace Together uses Bluetooth to build a record of other app-enabled phones that have been nearby within two meters for at least 15 minutes. Those records are kept on the phone for 21 days. If a user tests positive for COVID-19, they can consent to upload those records to assist public health contact tracers who can then call anyone who may have been exposed. But in order for the app to work on iPhones, users must make sure the app is open and the phone is unlocked every time they go out. And while more than 100,000 Albertans have downloaded the app, more than 2 million need to use it in order for it to work. The University of Oxford study details it pretty well. We need 50 to 60 percent adoption rate in order for these apps to be effective. Morgan Chan's team has developed a different kind of app, one that uses GPS. Whether to adopt an app and which one is a decision each province and territory will have to make. But there's a growing call for a national strategy as well. Because if people keep use all different kind of tools, uh, then it will be more difficult. And some contacts, of course, may go in between provinces. So I think that's an a important area of discussion. With little time to waste as Canada works towards a new normal under the still present threat of COVID-19. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. For the first time in its 115-year history, the entire New York subway system was deliberately shut down overnight. Workers cleaned and disinfected the cars to reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19. The shutdown between 1 and 5 a.m. is going to be a nightly occurrence. Subway use in New York is down 90 percent, but about 11,000 people still rely on the trains during those overnight hours. The governor of New York says COVID-19 is on the retreat in his state, and he plans to take a cautious approach to reopening the economy. But President Donald Trump is pushing hard to get the whole country back to business, acknowledging that means people will still be at risk of getting sick and dying. And as Jackson Prosco reports, he's making some changes to his coronavirus task force. This is worse than Pearl Harbor. This is worse than the World Trade Center. In the fight against COVID-19, the Trump administration has made a stark choice, shifting its focus to reopening of businesses, a move the president admits will all but certainly lead to more deaths. We have to be warriors. We, we can't keep our country closed down for years. On Tuesday, Trump suggested scrapping the White House Coronavirus Task Force with its team of medical experts. Now he's going to retool it to focus on the economy. The panel's previous guidelines for a staged reopening were all but ignored by state after state. The concern is, uh, going forward, uh, we may see even more dysfunction. Add to that a new whistleblower complaint from a government doctor who says he tried to raise alarms about the pandemic response and was ignored. It paints a damning picture of the U.S. response. The administration was very uh, intent on providing good news and in sugarcoating how devastating this virus going to, was going to be. Dr. Rick Bright claims he warned about shortages of supplies like masks in January. And he pushed back against the use of unproven treatments touted by the president. That ultimately cost him his job. I was pressured to let politics and cronyism drive decisions. The details are very concerning. So it wasn't just a difference of opinion. There was a disregard, seemingly, of science. 
The science suggests the outbreak is far from under control, with cases growing so fast in dozens of states that they're making up for the declines seen in hard-hit New York. The result is that the U.S. is still recording thousands of deaths every day. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. The new series that goes inside the COVID-19 pandemic, from the front lines to the everyday heroes helping us cope with the unprecedented change. Coronavirus, the new reality. A Global News special, Sundays at 7 on Global.